Former Vice President Joe Biden unveiled more of his plan to tackle economic inequality during his speech in his hometown of Wilmington, Delaware, today. And this time, he took questions. Our CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe asked the presumptive Democratic nominee about how he believes voters should view his candidacy. Let's take a listen. You alluded to this, but a lot of voters seem to think or are saying that their support hinges on the fact that you're not the president. So why, perhaps, should they be voting for you and not just against the president? That's why I'm laying out these detailed plans. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm running because Trump is the president. And I think our democracy is at stake, for real. And uh, what seems to be the case is many Americans, those who don't like me and those who do, view me as the antithesis of Trump. And I believe that I am. And I, when I announced, I said I was running because I And was Ed O'Keefe joins me now from Wilmington. Ed, it's great to see you actually out there on the campaign trail. Um, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. First of all, tell us about the answer um, that you were looking to elicit from the former vice president there. Well, I, it was, what exactly are you running for? And, and, you know, he has made the point, and he made the point in the long answer, that his, his goal is to restore the soul of the nation, as he likes to say, and that it was because of the way Trump has behaved and acted and governed as president that he felt compelled to actually get into the race this time. And so, uh, in essence, he's doubling down on it. Yes, this is about Trump for him. And, and if people are, do, are with him because he's a way of getting rid of the president, uh, he seems to be perfectly at peace with that. Uh, he did say specifically, look, there's two, two big reasons why he thinks uh, people could uh, be supportive of him in the affirmative. One, he says he believes he understands foreign policy uh, and has been very involved in it and would know how to very quickly begin restoring the country's standing around the world. You could point out that critics have said uh, perhaps he was wrong on certain foreign policy decisions, whether it's the war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan. Former Defense Secretary Robert Gates has famously said that Biden was wrong about every significant foreign policy decision over the past 40 years. Regardless, Biden sees it as a strength. The second one, he said, is that he's been relatively successful in getting people to work together in Congress. That is true. As vice president and when he was a senator, he was known to be a bit of a bipartisan power broker. And certainly when he was vice president, worked well with Republican leader Mitch McConnell on things like the fiscal cliff, the government shutdowns, gun control, although that didn't go anywhere, getting the Affordable Care Act passed, uh, and the like. And so, you know, it's, in essence, it's, it's the argument of experience and an understanding of how a president should be running, uh, you know, using the role. Uh, th that is his basic argument. He's not very succinct about it, uh, but whatever, or regardless, it seems to be working right now. Um, Ed, let's talk about this speech today. What are the basics, Ed, of Joe Biden's plan to tackle racial and economic inequality, and how does he propose paying for it? Right. Well, that's the part he hasn't entirely answered, even though he said so, because we asked his campaign about that earlier today. How are you going to pay for all this? And they said, ah, oh, we're working on it. And then today in his speech, he said, I've, I've explained how I'm going to pay for it. It's partly by raising taxes on top earners, uh, various real estate taxes that benefit the wealthy, rolling back some of the Trump era tax cuts as well. But he didn't specifically outline how these proposals today would, would exactly be paid for. In bottom line, it, it would, among other things, set aside $30 billion of previously proposed spending on small business opportunities for black, Asian, Latino, Native American businesses. One of the things he'd like to see happen is the government as a customer, one of the largest customers in the world, make sure that minority-owned contractors or businesses in general become uh, those that the government is using, whether it's for, you know, uh, IT services or, uh, you know, food supply or, or some other, you know, technology or whatever. The goal is to, is to make sure that they're using uh, minority-owned businesses and also calling on the president and Congress to make some changes in housing policy. Housing remains a big concern of minorities uh, when it comes to uh, erasing racial inequities. Uh, and, and he's calling on Trump and the, and the Congress to, to take action on that right away. Uh, Ed, before we let you go, Congresswoman Val Deming says she is chomping at the bit to discuss Joe Biden's potential VP pick. Do you have any insight on when that announcement could come? 
He said today that he is announcing it the first week of August. Look at your calendar, and that's next week. He was asked, <laughs> will he meet in person, face to face, okay. with these potential picks? And he wouldn't answer that question directly. Uh, a reporter also asked if he'd be willing to take a COVID test, for example, beforehand, uh, before meeting with somebody face to face, and he wouldn't get into it. So a lot of logistical questions remain. We also don't know if a list of about 10 names has been shrunk at all to a final handful. Uh, and look, it's, it's one of the uh, annoying aspects of covering a campaign in the midst of a pandemic. There are a lot of them. It's understandable, but there are a lot of them. And the big one being, it's been very difficult to read tea leaves as this process continues. The vice president, former vice president, lives just a few minutes from here in Wilmington, Delaware. Reporters have begun staking out his house for any potential clues of somebody is coming by. We haven't seen them yet. Uh, whether he'll hold Zoom interviews or in-person interviews with the person he's picked remains to be seen. Right. The campaigns and the campaign coverage uh, drastically altered in this day and age. Ed O'Keefe on the campaign trail for us. Ed, thank you very much.